right guys and welcome back to part 9 of our top down RPG series. Now today we're going to be focusing purely on the player attack and then we'll move across to the enemy attack in our next video. Now as you guys know we did the effects last week uh, or yesterday so take a look at that video just giving it that little ambient look with regards to that dungeon look as you can see with the little flies that we did there and now we're going to be focusing on the player attack. So firstly we're going to be doing a little bit of tidying up and then we're going to do what we did with the enemy with regards to the instant variables so we know in which direction our player is now currently we've got it set to the current animation uh, frames and that i'm going to want to change because i want it to automatically i want to move the the animations into its separate function so what i'm going to do first just to tidy up and it's good practice as well i mean we've started this tutorial but it's vital to learn how to clean code so that'll be part of the series too so the first thing to do is I want you to click on your player uh, base and I want to go and add a few instant variables. So in this case, I'm going to add a boolean, if true, obviously, or if not, and I want to call that sword. Right. Um, uh, sword, let's say sword animation, maybe sword mode. Let's, no, this is cool. Okay, let's, cool. let's keep it sword. Okay. Right. Then the next one I want to add is walking. Let's do walking as well. And, and this purely is for the different, I wouldn't say states, we're gonna have states, but this just tells us what the player is currently doing. So then I wanna check that. If true, then I want this animation to do that. So I'm just gonna set this all up. And if I'm gonna have, for instance, like, you know, a different weapon or other weapons, I can add them as instant variables. Now, eventually we are gonna move this to a dictionary, just to be very clear, but we'll, we'll explain that later dictionaries versus global variables and, and better practices when storing large amounts of data. Okay, so don't stress too much with regards to that. Now, once you've got those two variables set, we can obviously use them, you know, if the sword is out, if he is walking, we can do specific animations, All right? So now what I do wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I've got this left click, yeah, you could say on attack. I wanna delete this, you know, this bullet basically, because we don't need the bullet anymore moving forward. So I want to go ahead there on our layout and just delete the bullet. And that is now gone and out of our life, which is fantastic. Right. The next thing I want to do is just delete it from here with the collision because really it makes no difference at this moment in time because we're going to have a sword animation. So don't stress too much with regards to that. Now we need to go and tidy up the, the let's create the, you could say animation side of things. So I'm going to go and create a new group add group and I'm gonna call this player animation animations and this is where we're gonna store all the player animations we do the same for the enemy as we did but this just makes it a lot easier right so now here we're gonna go for argument's sake we're gonna go if player because we've got to set their player base is not attacking we're gonna do the comparison of the balloon the boolean instance so we go with sword if it is not the sword right then we're gonna go done okay so if it's not the sword and anything else and then let's add a sub event as well. Add a sub event, add a sub event. And the player, check the boolean again. Boolean, where is my boolean? Instance variable. Is not walking either, which I'm gonna invert. So let's do that. Invert, so player in read not, is not in sword mode and player B is not walking either. I can then go and say, please go and idle for me. So this animation here, I wanna put that now here. I don't want to say idle. Right, so I can go ahead and delete this. So we're going to be tidying up because this is going to now manage all the animations a lot easier. Okay, great, fantastic. The next one we've got here is we've got walk down, walk up, walk left. So what I want to do here is add another variable to the player animation. Uh, let's go ahead and actually, we could do it on the player animation. Um, uh, should we do that? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go add an instant variable and let's call it direction. Very much like the enemy one. Direction, and let's go ahead and make that a string. Okay, fantastic, there it is. Now what I want us to do is, on the if the player is walking up, let's go and set this here. We're gonna go animation, set this variable, set the value of direction, and let's go make that up. Right. And this is gonna to need to match our animation frames here that we've got on the right hand side. We're gonna make sure that the naming conventions are right because we're gonna use this as a variable. Okay, so we go up, and then if it's down, obviously I want to paste it here. I want to say it's down. It's down. And 
obviously, um, I'm going to remove the mirror now. Okay, because we're not going to need that as of yet. Not mirrored. I think that is right. That needs to be right, sorry. I'm going to say. It's right. I'm going to copy paste that. I'm going to put this down in the down mode. Okay, which will be here. And that'll be down. Fantastic. And the last one is left. Right, fantastic. So now you can see we've got, we're setting that direction that we know that if the player is moving down, this can in fact can come over here. If the player is moving down, we're hitting the down motion. If he's moving left, we're, hitting the, we're filling the direction to the left motion. And that is good to go. Now, instead of having all this here, and this is where the tidy comes up. You notice that we're hitting it every time. So those are four events right there, which is pointless. So what we can do is we can actually remove those events. We have to delete those events. Because now we're going to have one, one line basically doing everything. So there we go. So now it's all tidy. Now we've just got the controls. So if I disable the controls, I'm not disabling the animations, which is vital. Now we can go ahead and set it here. So now we can add another sub event here and go add another sub event. And we can go player base. Now we can check that boolean again. Boolean variable. And we can say if he's now, for instance, let's say walking. If he's now not walking, play idle, and he's not in sword mode. If he is walking, go and set the um, go and set basically the, anim the the walking animation. And what we're going to do there is we're going to just say walking. I might just have to change it this side because I've got left and right, so we'll have to clone that. Let's just clone that, duplicate that, rename. Let's call this walking walking left. Okay, and then this one I'm going to rename. Call that walking right. So they're gonna have to be separate now. Walking right. So he's got walking right and then walking left, and then I've just got to invert these. So he looks the other way, because that's obviously walking left. So I'm not using the mirror now, I'm using just the animation. And that's great. Now we can go ahead and basically say walking underscore and then the end sign. And then we can use the player base. Sorry, the at sign, the end sign. And then go player base, which is, I think it's on player base, right? Player base, player base dot the direction. Sorry, not player base, it's player animation. Animation dot the direction, which is that variable that we have on the left hand side here. Okay. Now we just need to do the same for the idle. So let's go ahead and copy this direction. We'd have to go and make all the different sprites for that as well. Just a heads up, guys. I haven't done it. I've only got one idle, which is a down. But let's just do that as well. So if we go ahead and play animation, you'll see I've only got the idle down. We'd have to go and make all the different idles. But we can do that. I'll do that off, off screen. So the left idle, the right idle, and the up idle. Then the next thing we're going to have to do, because this is not going to work, we need to go ahead and also add... I should have just kept it there, the not moving. So it is moving. Invert that and then set the global boolean, not the global boolean, the player boolean to false. Walking is false. Okay, because now he's not walking. So we can give that a test. And we'll see there's the guy. And we see he's not gonna go left or right because I haven't said it's true yet. It's always gonna be false. So now we just need to do one last thing and copy this variable and then basically add it to everyone here. And that will then sort that out. And then we can go ahead and say he is true because he is in fact walking. And this is quite nice. This groups the entire walking process to a separate group. So if we disable this entire group, uh, when we use the melee attack, which you're going to see shortly, then we've managed it all in one group. Right, so that should work. If we go ahead now and we walk around, you can see left and right, he's down, he's up. And if I walk down and I stop, he should idle. But he won't idle if I go left because we don't have the idle left. So it's keeping the last known position. Okay, I've only got idle down. Fantastic. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the melee attack. I'll worry about the idle. Like I said, I'll create those little sprites at the um, when the video is off. But you guys would need to go ahead, just a heads up, and go and set the idle up, the idle to the left and the idle right. But because I've got the melee ready, I'm just going to show you guys how that works. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the on click. So we're going to put this left click 
for the attack in terms of the sword. So yeah, you can see I've got the animation. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that, the walking animation, because all animations are now gonna be managed over here. Okay, in the animation AI. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm going to want to disable the walking functions. When he's swinging the sword, I don't want him to move. I want him to attack on the animation finished, then go ahead and activate the walking, sort of, you could say, the player movement. I'm just gonna minimize this quickly to give you an idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on click here. I'm gonna go system, firstly. System, and then we're gonna look for group. Right, set group active. And then I'm gonna go, and that is the player movement if I'm not mistaken. So let's just go, yeah. Go player movement. Player movement is deactivated. Fantastic. Now let's make sure the naming's right. Player movement, great. So it's gonna go and deactivate this. So if I click now on my little game, and I'm walking around, but if I hit the mouse, then you can see the player no longer moves. Okay, that's exactly what we want. The next thing we're gonna do is start this animation. This is why this was so important. So I'm gonna just copy this and paste it, and I'm gonna go ahead and just slide it right underneath here. And then we're gonna move this to the attacking, which is the, if I'm not mistaken, melee, Let me just double check the spelling. So we're gonna go melee, and that's attack, that's a melee underscore attack underscore down. Okay, that is the naming conventions that we're gonna to need to stick with. Fantastic. And then we're gonna take that, and we're gonna go Paste that in there. Melee attack underscore. Right, so that is the melee attack, and then obviously the direction it's in. The next thing I want to do is I basically want to have a finish on this. Now I could have it while playing do something, but I want to go and add a finish slash. So let's go and add, let's go here, and we're going to go enemy animation is finished. Unfinished, this animation, go ahead now and say system, because now we need to reactivate this. So we need to go system, activate, done. I'm gonna go animation, because we need to set that variable as well. So we need to go to, uh, I think that is player base, set the boolean to sword is false. And we need to copy that as well, and say that the sword is true. Test it. And then just pull that right up here so we know that these two are together. Okay, so that should be it. Now we could make this separate. I might just move this into, into its own little, you could say, under this group so that we have everything managed for one group. But that should now basically work. Right, let's see if that works. There we go. So there you can see the sword. We might want to speed that up because you can see it's a little bit slow. So let's go ahead and speed that up. And we're going to just set the speed here in the attack animation. We could also just do it in the code, but I'm just going to set it here to, let's say, 10. Make it really fast. Set those all to 10. And 10. And the last one, 10. Fantastic. Go ahead and close. And there we have it, guys. So there we got it. You can see nice and quick. His little animation, he stops, he idles, he walks, he does his thing, and he's got his sword. Fantastic, so that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. That's the animation and how we're also starting to slowly clean up all this. This grouping is so vital moving forward now because as you can see, we're gonna start deactivating certain things that might happen. We need to ensure that we have control of the certain groups. So that is a great way to tidy up the code. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next video, we're gonna be stuck in the collision with the sword onto the enemy AI, as well as the enemy's um, attack formations. And then from there, we're gonna be working with the destroy uh, functions and showing you guys how to remove uh, all these functions and put them into their separate um, event sheets so that the code all makes sense and is all tidy and at a great uh, you can say industry standard uh, that moving forward, you guys know exactly where to scratch when, you, when you're editing and deleting or having more than one individual working on your code. Right guys, as always, if you could uh, hit the subscribe for those of you that are new here and the little thumbs button there, that'd be fantastic. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.